our turn. Okay, g6. So my feeling when you go d4, g6, you should probably just go e4 here. Um, but let me, let's stick to the queen's gambit. And let's just play classic. All right, looks like we're gonna get a king's Indian. Knight f6. All right, I'm gonna go with the um, the same-ish, f3. I like h3 nowadays, but uh, not exactly the simplest line to play. Um, so let's go with something pretty straightforward. Yeah, knight e2, bishop e3, queen d2, rook c1. Let's kind of develop simply. And rook e8, we'll go queen d2. So this knight on e2 is important, so that on e5 we can push d5. This knight can't come into d4. Knight a5, attacking the c-pawn. Well, eventually this guy is moving away and bishop will come out. Or bishop can go to g2. But here, c pawn is hanging, so we can play b3 or we can go like knight g3 and just get the bishop out. I kind of like this idea. Hey, thanks for following. I missed the username. Yeah, next game I'll play the Martel Plata, sure. <laughs> no problem. So now this bishop is coming out, either e2, maybe d3. Black needs to decide now what they want to do. Like, they got to get something going in the center. So I'm going to go... Bishop d3. Arcia, thanks for following. Much appreciated. Moody Rooster, welcome. Net a5 is actually a, a move in these positions, but it, it's it's a very specific move. You can't just um, it doesn't quite work in every position. It has to be followed up with like c5. And then you try to play for like a Benko style b5. But to go knight a5 and then back to c6, of course, this is just losing a lot of time. Hey, thanks for following everyone. Hey, Venki Tesh. I do know Semi, not personally, but I've seen I've seen his stuff. Very funny guy. Hey Bitcoin Louie, how you doing? Um, well, okay guys, I think it's just time to castle here. We can also play this one more aggressively, but bishop h6, okay, this one is going to be hanging. So yeah, let's just castle and keep things simple. Oh no, Moro didn't want to teach you Sedant. That's too bad. Okay, knight d7 going after this pawn. I think we're gonna try to bring this one. Maybe we just bring this one back to e2. Now that it's kind of nice and, and solid. We can also push d5 here and take some space. But d5 always allows black to get some square. So yeah, let's go knight e2. Keep the center. Keep everything under control. All right, e5, let's push. I guess knight wants to come to d4. And then we'll go bishop b1 and attack the knight. Force black to trade it off. Knight 
Knight B4. Mm. No, I don't like this one because he wants to trade, but of course I'm just going to pull back and not allow it. And this knight is going to get caught. Now he's got to go A5 just to make some room for the knight. <laughs> Thanks, David. Catch you later. Okay, a5. Let's push. And we'll bring our bishop back. Okay, now our plan is very simple. We want to just play rook b1 and b4. And just push on the queen side. The fright. Thanks for following. A c6. So this move doesn't really come with a threat. So I think we're just going to follow our plan. We can also just play b4 immediately. Taking advantage of the pet A, B, A, B. And Rook is coming to A8. Hey, Balder. Well, chess is a very long term process. It's, uh, you know, it's very hard to improve quickly. So you want to just like take it easy, just take your time, play slow games like G30, for example, and then do a lot of puzzles, maybe read some books, watch some videos, play through some games, but it takes like months and months and months of work. Black is really trying to close everything down, but we got an open A file. And also take. But I like pushing. Sure, we have a lot of space, but it's not so easy to figure out how to break through here. Okay, let's improve the bishop. My favorite books for beginner are the Churn of Books uh, by Irving Chernoff. Okay, we're gonna do a little positional sacrifice here. We're gonna advance that one because I really want this b5 square for the knight and I want the open file for the rook. Okay, he didn't take, that's a little strange. But uh, I guess he wants to take next move. That's fine. Black playing really well actually, I have to say. Defending really well. What about John Nunn's comment on that book of Chernev? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what he said. You're going to have to be more specific. Okay, let's bring this guy in. Irving Chernev. Chernev. Um, he just wrote some very instructive books for beginners, like Logical Chess, Move by Move, Most Instructive Games of Chess Ever Played. I just think his annotations are, are useful and helpful for beginners. I also really like the book The Soviet Chess Primer. I think that's a nice one. Okay, f5, kind of fighting for the king side, but I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw bishop g5 at this guy. And maybe bishop f6. So clear yet. Hmm.
Maybe queen a5, actually. I just got drawn to this move, just putting pressure on this guy. Um, I'm okay with Reassessor Chess. I like that book. <laughs> it's in my video like the most um, overrated books, <laughs> but I actually think that's because it, it's like it's treated as the, the Bible <laughs> of positional chess. But I think it's a good book. I just don't think it's like the greatest book uh, of all time. Okay, I was kind of waiting for this blunder. Um, so now we get this one and we're gonna take on b6 here winning winning two pieces for the rook. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's uh, that's a valid criticism, Venkitesh. But um, yeah, I just think like even though the analysis is inaccurate, it I still think the annotations are useful for beginners. Okay, now we can win more material. Bishop c7. That looks pretty good, actually. Let's do it. Yeah, I mean, I, I really like John Nunn uh, as an author as well. I think his book, uh, Understanding Chess Move by Move, is uh, is a really good book for, for beginner players as well. Okay, we can probably take a lot of stuff here, but let's just take this one. And we can take this one. you gotta be 1400 <laughs> if you want to play yeah no reassess your chest definitely a, a good book 100% Improve our rook. Hmm, Fisher 16 memorable games. Nice. Well what's your what's your level, Beard Red? Okay guys, let's I think we gotta be quick here. Let's start coming in. I think we got this one covered. Around 1500, nice. Yeah, Fisher book will be great. It's definitely one of my favorites. Right, taking some space here. Although this is kind of weakening actually, but hopefully we can get away with it. Oh, why don't we play bishop e7? Oops. <laughs> totally missed this one. That would have been it.
now I'm just coming in after the rook. He has a check, but we can come up. This was definitely not my most precise game of the run, I have to say. <laughs> Mainly just going after this rook. Highest trading I've ever had? You mean on chess.com? Probably like 26 something. Let's take this one, and we'll take this one next. Removing the defender. What's the first thing I would tell a beginner player who wants to improve? Play long time control games. G30 or longer, and think about your moves. Don't finish the game with like 25 minutes on your clock. You should have, you should use your time. That's the biggest thing I would say. Also develop, focus on developing your pieces. Develop, develop, develop. That's mainly what I've been noticing in the speed run. Like people don't develop enough. Of course they hang stuff, tactics, that's very important. But develop, use your time, don't hang stuff. Do I have some book for chess history 1900 and above? Yeah. Um, of course, uh, my great predecessors. G30 means 30 minutes uh, per side. Yeah. All right, now we're playing for checkmate. So queen is coming in. Bishop will have to block and that's gonna be that. All right, GG. How to find our style to choose our openings? I don't know, Vinky. Try to try different stuff out. You know, try E4, try D4. See what you like. Okay, D4, Knight of Six, C4, E6. Okay, let's play Knight C3. We're gonna allow a Nimzo. Should be four. I'll go queen c2 here. Just defending the knight with the queen. Yeah, last game was well played for sure. Okay, knight of queen c2, castles. Let's play knight f3. Bishop takes c3, we'll take with the queen. C5, all right. We could take this one, but this one often ends up really weak and black will be able to win it back, like knight a6 and, and so on. So my suggestion here would be to just develop normally and not try to win the pawn. Although we could take and then just not not try to hold on to the pawn as well. That's totally reasonable too. Like take knight a6, go e3, take bishop e2, and just develop. Yeah, let's go bishop g5. We'll just develop our pieces here. Okay, suggestions for, yeah, beginner players. Play longer time control games, g30. 
take your time, use your time during the games. A lot of people get confused by this. They start a game G30, and then when they finish it, they have like 28 minutes on their clock. That's not playing a G30, that's playing a Blitz game. <laughs> so start with G30 and then use the whole time and make sure to look for different options on every move. So try not to just play your first instinct move, try to consider different options. E3, C takes D5, a lot of possibilities. It's hard to play a lot of games if you're playing 30 minute games though. Yeah, but the thing is, it's not about how many games you play, it's about like the quality of your ideas and your analysis. So if you're just playing Blitz and you're just like making random moves, you're not gonna improve, right? You're just playing random moves. <laughs> you're just playing the first moves that come to mind. See, a lot of people, I think they they get a little confused because it's like, the question they're asking, which is an impossible question is like, how do I just become a genius Blitz player? It's like, that's not how it works. You can't just, <laughs> you can't just grind your way. Like, you know, you play a million hours of Blitz and that's it, you know, game over. Like, you actually got to take your time and, and think through your ideas. Very, very important. Now, it doesn't mean you can't play Blitz at all, but uh, it's not going to be the thing that improves your chess. Yeah, let's take this one and we'll see how black wants to recapture if they take back with the pawn then we can definitely think about taking the the c pawn and if they take with the queen we'll take the the knight on f6 here and if knight takes take this one knight takes c3 we will go bishop e7 they're hitting the rook and then hitting the pawn um this is one of the main lines of the nimzo yeah definitely Okay, knight takes d5. Now, this bishop is defended, so we can also just take this pawn. But I kind of like takes, takes, bishop e7, rook e8, bishop takes c5. Yeah, let's go for the end game. Hey, pizza racer. How's it going? Thanks for saying hi. <laughs> right, if you're used to playing Blitz, then it's hard to slow down. No, I, I totally get it, but that's why I'm making such a big point of it is because that's like that's the thing that I notice. I mean, and we see it at at all levels. Like when we cover games that are like 90-30 or like 45-30. And then, you know, they only spend like five minutes. So Dant, I I already gave you an answer yesterday. You're you're too high rated. <laughs> you're too strong. So it's not going to cut it. So please stop asking because you, you make me a bad guy. I have to say, you think I like saying no to you? You think I enjoy saying no to you every single day? <laughs> it gets quite exhausting. Why you make me do this to you? Please, I am 1300. I don't believe that's a dant. We both know your ratings are much higher. <laughs> okay, we're up a pawn in this endgame, guys. We're gonna try to convert it. The important thing here is to keep developing. We could also play e4, but I'm just gonna keep everything super solid. 
Don't want to go too crazy here. I just want to develop the bishop. Weedle Raid, thanks for following. Do I think on my opponent's move or do I take a break? I'm usually trying to think honestly as much as I can. So that means on my opponent's turn as well. And I'm just kind of thinking about like what my next move might be. You know, maybe I'll play bishop d3, maybe I'll put my king on d2, maybe I'll bring one of the rooks to the file. Maybe actually I reconsider, maybe king on e2 makes more sense so the rook can go to d1. Yeah, it's hard to say whether to push e3 or e4 when you can do both. I would say in the end game, if you're just trying to be solid, maybe you don't have to take that much space, but in the middle game, it's actually a lot of times better to take space. Here, actually, I think e4 would have been a perfectly reasonable uh, move as well. Okay, let's keep developing bishop d3. And then we'll go king e2. Rook d1, rook c1. And b3. Okay, e5. Sharp move, but I think we can just take this one. If knight e5, bishop takes g2, rook g1. We have some nice initiative. Or we can take with the pawn. Bishop takes f3, gf, rook e5. Then we have two bishops advantage. Hmm. Actually, I'm thinking a little bit deeper here. Knight takes e5, bishop takes g2, rook g1. Bishop goes somewhere. And then we'll have bishop b5. Yeah, I like this one. I feel like we get a really, really active position here after knight takes e5. De, of course, also possible. Then maybe black goes knight d7 and tries to... Uh, Take on e5. f6. Okay, this allows bishop c4 check. That's going to be a pretty nasty, nasty discovery. You know, king h8, knight f7, game over. This is why, you know, this is why Ben Feingold says never play f6, because usually when you play f6, this is what happens, unfortunately. You get hit on the diagonal. Yeah, thanks for all the follows, guys. Much appreciated. You know, we try to do educational stuff on the channel. If you're interested in getting better, that's what we're here for. <laughs> yeah, there is a whiteboard behind me, indeed. Okay, King H8, let's come in. Yeah, TST, 100, Thromped, Balls on you. <laughs> Thanks for following. Okay, we have a nice discovered attack. Now we're going to go knight d6 check and take the rook. G baby poker, palul 25, Isashiro 08. Thank you guys so much for following. Much appreciated. 
Actually, we just broke 4,000 today. It's very exciting. GG Camel. GG Camel Cactus. All right, let's stick to D4. Queen's Gambit. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Stream over. Knight C3. Speed run complete. Okay, C5, the Tarash defense. Let's take. This is kind of the usual recipe. You take on D5. Black takes back with the pawn. And then one day these guys get traded and black will be left with an IQP. Okay, C takes D4. Queen takes. He takes D5. Now we can actually take this one. There is a gambit here. Black goes knight c6, kind of a funny, funny line. Um, but here I think we just take this one. And we win a nice pawn. So we're going to try to recapture and then look at that c7 square with the knight. Maybe bishop f4 coming as well. e7 all right let's just trade queens and go for the end game i don't know um i cup spec you're, you're gonna see stronger players blunder a lot more so to me it's honestly not the most surprising thing but okay now we're just developing our our position here just because we're up a pawn doesn't really change much we still have to just try to develop big sean thanks for following okay bishop a5 mm, now wants to take this pawn on e4 so what do we want to do here? We can go bishop b5 check. Or we can just play bishop d3 and defend the pawn this way. We can also play e5 and kick the knight around. But then e5, knight d5 and uh we're gonna have trouble with our knight on c3 you're gonna have to weaken our pawns there Benozo. <laughs> yeah, his account is closed. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, actually, I'm gonna go with maybe simple move, bishop d2, and then if take, take, knight takes e4, we can uh, take on g7. Beautiful. Then we can also castle and get our rook in the game quickly, too. And we're considering e5 here because then the knight can't really go anywhere too active. Black castles. Yeah, people will get their rating back. Everyone's so worried about that. It's one game, guys. It's eight points. <laughs> I'm taking eight points from these people. But yeah, they get it back. I'm a little worried about this one. I feel like we should just be continuing to develop everything here. Castles, knight g4, a little bit unpleasant. Actually, let's go e5 because other than rook e8, black isn't gonna have a lot of moves.
Okay, knight g4. Now I want to go h3. Can he take? Take rook e8. That's kind of annoying. f4, f6, bishop c4, check. King moves over. And we can just castle. We're still ahead in development, so let's do it. I'm hoping we go down this line. Nice. Knight takes e5. Alright, this is a good player. I also think about castling here. Rook takes. And then some trick, but I don't really see the trick because this one is going to be covered. So bishop f4. can do something. So let's go f4. Now f6. Bishop c4. King probably goes to h8. Knight is still pinned. We're losing the knight, but my idea was to just give back the knight and um, get an open f file. Well, knight, knight c6 is not helpful because black sacrificed a piece, right? So on f4. He never wants to take with the knight. And then I'll go bishop c4 and pin the f pawn so he won't be able to win back the wouldn't be able to win back the piece. Okay, knight c6. So yeah, we're a little bit better here. We got extra pawn, good development, but could all go away quickly if we're not precise. Alright, let's go rookie one. Now 95, of course, we're taking that one. E6, no, this is too slow. Too slow. Bishop E6 had to be played. Because now we can just push, and this pawn is just going to cramp everything. Now black's pieces don't get out. So bishop e6 was a hard, hard only move, in my opinion. Okay, b5, whatever. It's not impressive. We can go here and, yeah, put the put the pressure on. So tough one. I think black was doing really well. That's why I'm upset. <laughs> You're doing so good. This should be six was the move. Then my plan was to take, take rook f7. We're still happy, but it's uh, not over, far from it. All right, here we're just coming in. Let's activate the rooks. And okay, somehow we want to get our bishop on this diagonal. Though at this point, we're just kind of winning material. Like rook b8, we're going to take, take, bishop takes c6. And that's going to be game over. The old, the old removing the defender. Take this one. All right. Now let's push. Let's promote the pawn. B4. Bishop G5. <laughs> Where's Brayden with the betting? Um, rookie seven was not gonna work because we take it in this position, right? Rookie seven take, knight takes, bishop takes here. So we win, we win the two pieces for the rook. Uh, okay, g5. Let's go. This one will go here. Okay, rook takes, that's fine. We'll trade off and we'll go into this end game. We'll win this end game. First things first, let's just bring in the king. We got the extra piece, so shouldn't it be too hard?
how am I able to do the points refund? Chess.com just does it. They just, uh, they take the account and they refund all the games. King e4. Now we just want to trade off the bishops. Easy. Defended. Will we see a knight and bishop mate? I don't think so, because we're gonna trade this guy off and uh and just use our extra knight. And we're just gonna keep this one real simple. King does all the work. Knight is just here to lose a couple tempi. But king does all the work. Okay. GG.